Hi everybody, Jo here again. How are you doing? I hope you're doing okay. I hope your week's going well. Now, today I've come in again, bit of a technique Tuesday. I've been asked about masking. Now, it is something we've covered before, but I know sometimes, I mean, we all forget things. I mean, don't mention forgetting things. Do you know at the minute I go into room and seriously, I do forget where I've gone in. Um, but... So masking, we've got lovely new followers at Lavinia. So I'm going to do this video for those lovely crafters, but also there's quite a few seasoned ones and we do forget and there are lots of different ways to do masking. So I'm going to create this sort of design and I'm going to be use, using our Lavinia masking sheets. Now there is a masking liquid I know our lovely Mona uses that a lot. So if you want to know about the liquid, maybe pop over and watch her videos. There's no point me doing one on the same product because, again, she uses it so brilliantly. So it's good for me to use something different. Both have the merits, but they're used in different ways. And it's like everything. It might be you want to use both, but at different times. So as I say, today I'm going to be using these Lavinia masking sheets. And... I'm going to pop that there. By the way, just before um, we start, the other thing I've had is a couple of ladies have messaged and said, I need a new home card. And what I'm thinking is this would make a lovely new home card. But we also have our set of number stamps, don't we? Now, if you knew the number of the house, the new house, you could add, and wouldn't that be a lovely touch? I mean, let's face it, you could maybe even make a little disc to go around the house or just add it on here. And I think that just will be a lovely way of making it really personal. So that's something I wanted to mention. Better do it now, because like I say, I'll forget later. So I'm going to start off with, and you know I favour this multi-pack of multi various card. So this is the smaller piece. So this is the A6. And, you know, it's amazing how much you can fit. I always think that looks smaller, but look, it's amazing how much you can fit on that small piece of card. Now, what we need to do first is I always think it's best to make your mask first. So just to show you, I tend to cut my masking sheet into sort of a, the size I'm going to require going to put those on the floor on Eric sorry mate now just thing to be aware the plastic this is just your carrier sheet it's the tissuey thing that we're going to be using now so I'm going to get which one shall I go for so I'm going to be using today the honeysuckle cottage and toad lodge I just wanted to see which one I needed the mask for because obviously I've got some already cut out and all you're going to do is ink up your stamp I like to do this first because it's almost a way of me sometimes my first impression my inking up isn't as good as my second so I think I might as well use it on the tissue paper so I'll just give it a stamp and stamp on the tissue side and then all you're going to do is cut this out now a little tip you can the best way is making a cut, say, here, cut it out all the way round, and then you've almost got the inner and the outer. So you've got your mask and almost a stencil for a round. So you can almost get two there. Do be aware, your ink, your VersaFine Claire, I always say this, it's a slower drying ink. It can be slow to dry on your tissue. So either blot it or just leave it for a few seconds before you cut it out. Now, I've already got some cut out because you don't want to see me cutting out. And just so you're aware, what I tend to do is my acetate that I keep my stamps on, I just keep my, my little masks on there, look, and then I can use them again and again. You'll be amazed how many times you can use them. And the main thing with masking to remember is you always stamp the thing that's nearest to you first. So we're going from the front and then we'll stamp going back. So what we'll do is get our lovely cottage that we've got at the front. And I'm just checking. This is Toad Lodge. As I say, between Honeysuckle, I mean, it really doesn't matter which one of the two. You could use the larger cottages. 
You know me, I'm lucky if I get the name right. I do tend to invent their own names. And this is going to be, as I say, the one in the front. So I'm going to put it sort of, we'll go here. I want it off centre, you know me. I'll give that a good, good stamp. Lovely. And I'm just going to give that a blot. Only sometimes when I find when I put the masking sheet on again, it can blot, especially if you've got a juicy ink pad. So, like I say, I'll get my mask look, and I have used this quite a few times, you can see, and it just peels off the acetate. And carefully place it on. And again, I'm thinking, there, that's fine for me. I don't cut right to the top, look, we're fine there. Now, this has been used that many times, the edges may just peel a little, but I'm a bit thrifty. I, <laughs> I use them to as many times as I can. So, let's bring in our next. And the idea is that what we're going to do is work our way back. And obviously your mask will protect this cottage now so that when we stamp this one and again perspective because I'm going behind I'm just going to go up a little bit as well and I almost like to press a little bit harder where the mask is but one thing to bear in mind look I always get a little bit here. Sometimes, look, it's stamped beautifully to wear the mask. Sometimes I get a little bit that, of, that's missing. Don't worry about this. Honestly, it's not a problem. We can either use our fine liner and draw it in, but I'll just add some pastel pencil, a shading. So I'd be shading that bit anyway. I do need to cut another mask, look. Behave. Right, so I think we'll put one of these cottages at the other side as well. like to have three dwellings so again this is protected look so we'll go here and again just give a bit of extra oomph where we're going over the that stamped beautifully now again I'm just going to give that a bit of a blot You stay down. Now, I've already got a couple of masks cut out for our honeysuckle. So let's just pop that one on. Now, if you were just stamping the cottages, you could you would take the masks off. You wouldn't need to put these on. But we're going to stamp some trees behind. So again, you could use your florals. So oh, sorry if my head comes over. I have brushed my hair, honestly. Right, so we've now got all three of them masked. So we can bring in our trees. And I'm going to use a couple of trees from the small pine set. And this was new last year. And this set, I just thought, proportionally wise when really well so I'm, I'm keeping to my black now again you could use another color but I just thought today I'd stick with the black so I'm thinking I'm gonna have one tree here at the front and then let's just go for a second generation there now, I'm not sure how much of that will show but that'll be fine And then let's have one behind there. Maybe just a little second generation. And again, like I say, if there's a little bit of a gap, don't worry, we'll add some shading. Those pastel pencils will earn the money today. And maybe just one in the middle there. 
right missed a bit there I can see it's there I just obviously haven't pressed it but don't worry we'll fill that in I'm going to say I've done that on purpose so I can show you right we'll give that a wipe and I'm going to get the smaller tree now And let's just add a couple at this side. One there. And then, like I say, one just up and behind. Maybe just a couple at the top, I'm thinking. But just you build up your scene. But all the time what's happening is, the lovely thing is, you can have these trees look and you're masked behind. I want a second generation there. That to me didn't look right with it. There was a definite gap. And then let's just go. What I'm actually going to do is I want a tree in front here. So I'm just going to lift this up a little because I just want a tree in front. There. And I'll explain why I've done that. So if I'd have stamped on top there, my tree would have gone behind. Does that make sense? Whereas I actually want a tree in front of the house. So it's all about getting that what you want in front and what you want behind. Now, for me, I'm going to take the masks off now because I'm going to add some colour with ink, but I'm going to put it around. But you could leave the masks on i tell you what i'll leave the masks on to show you i'm a bit of a tinker i take them off well i'll take one off and i'll show you the difference of the sides so i'll take that one off i just do a bit of a cheat you see because our stencil brushes are so good and i almost color with them as if they were pencils so i find i could when i did my original i took the masks off at this point but i'll explain how if you not as confident with your um, stencil brushes. You can leave them on. So I'll show you the difference. Mini hill masks. And we're going to turn this way. And I'm going to come in with olive. Because we're just going to add some lovely greenery to the base. So in with my stencil brush. And this is number seven. So for the first one, I want quite a flat... And I think if we just go under, the lodge here. And you see it will mask, so I'll get green on the mask. So what I can literally do in the lid, always in the lid, is come on, look, and add my green. And there's my foreground. Give that a wipe. I have to say my new Inky Binky didn't stay clean for long, did it? Right, now I want a few little hills, so let's have a look. Let's go for this. Now, these two are masked, if you remember. So I can go straight around them with my brush I can go over the top and I know that the ink is going on the mask but what I've done with this one I've taken the mask off now the way I would do it because I've taken the mask off is because the stencil brushes I can get in quite close look I would just almost call around using my stencil brush oh so if I bring that closer so this one I can go straight over so if you want to go straight over leave your mask in place if you like me and you're happy to take the mask off the stencil brushes are so good you can just go around the dwelling so it really depends how you feel I'll add a couple of hills in the background so again this side I need to be mindful to not go over the cottage, but obviously this side. I've left those on, haven't I, so I can go. There we go. 
and then we'll add a little bit of sky. So it's time for the blue stencil brush. And our acetate circle masks. Now this one, I used the small one. And you know me, I'm just going to turn my work round. And I think we'll go over here. Just catch that. Now, again, if I'd left the mask on, I could have gone straight over. But like I say, it's not a problem because for me, I'm just going to avoid the house. And that's just the way I work. Going in the gap there. And I'm just adding, this is blue at all. So I'm just, take the moon mask away, look. And now I can just add some lovely, with my stencil brush, some lovely sky coming from the corners. And I like to do the corners first because if you've got, it's when you've got most ink on your brush and they'll be darkest. And for me, I always have the corners darker anyway. It's more forgiving. If you're new to blending, always do your corners and then when you've got less ink, drag it in. And there we go. We've built up our lovely scene and now happily we can take our masks off and as I say, pop those on the acetate on the back of the stamp and you've got that lovely design. And then we can add a little bit more stamping and that's just some foliage in the front. And for that, I'm going to use the woodland fern. So it just shows you how to get your trees behind and then to remember when you want a tree in front. And it just helps with your perspective when you're building up the whole design that we've got foreground and distance. So with these, I want some lovely dark and then second, third, fourth generation. And I love that contrast. I think A, it looks better, but B, you, you would get lighter and darker. And again, we want it to look as natural as possible look. So we've got a bit of a clump there. And ferns grow like that, don't they? So we'll have another. And there's two stamps in this woodland fern stamp set. I'm just using the one. I think I just want a little dark there. And then just maybe a little just catch in the top here. Yeah, like that. And again, I've got more on this side. So for me, I find that more appealing because it's off centre. So again, we'll give that a bit of a blot. And so that's the basis of your masking and the fabulous mask it sheets. So for me, we're just going to add some finishing touches now. So first of all, we'll add some colour. So I've got my, my watercolour pencils here. What I haven't done is clean my mat look. And that will annoy me, so we'll give that a bit of a, a bit of a zhuzh. And then I'm really just going to do some speedy colouring watercolour pencils so I'm just going to go straight in now if and I know Mr Mojo goes on holiday in January I think he has a busy Christmas New Year and then January is like right I'm off on holiday so if Mr Mojo's gone you know what you could do is even follow this video and then just spend some time relaxing I'm doing a bit of speedy colouring because I'm sure you don't want to actually see me just sit and colour all day. But I think that what you could do is a bit of colouring and take your time. Make yourself a lovely brew and enjoy colouring. Now I'm just adding... I've gone for an orange and there's a reason for that because I'm going to add some brown on top. So I've just added an orange. And then I'm going to come in with my brown and just go around the outskirts, the outer circumference of these stones. And for me, that just gives it almost a, 
a 3D and gives it a bit of dimension. But it, it's just speedy for me. And then... Just going to go over the whole... Like I say, you can take your time and really enjoy this. What I like to do is, I've done all the bricks in brown, but then I'm just going to add a couple of other colours. You could bring in the red, the orange, and then we'll have some yellow. Maybe a couple of yellow highlights. Then when it comes to the roofs, again, I'm just going to come in with my darker brown and very quickly add, there'll always be shade under that lovely twisted vine. And on this side, it's going to be darker. So I'll do my two sides, look, shade under there and then shade at the bottom. And especially at the bottom, I'm purposely not doing a straight line. And as I say, I am no colourist. Absolutely no training in colouring whatsoever. This is just my almost cheat way of um, adding colour. But you can, as I say, just spend time and really, really relax and enjoy Do the same for all three at the minute and then we'll look at where the light is hitting it. So what I'm going to do is just bring in I think some orange, just some little orange tones I think. I'm just going over the top of the brown just so the roofs have sort of got that nice orangey I love to mix colours. I think, you know, it's like I love adding pink or purple to the sky. I mean, recently we've had some beautiful skies. And I just love looking at nature and it gives me ideas. I'm leaving the white bits. And you see how quickly that has... With, I mean, I'm going to... With watercolour pencil, so I'm, I'm going to move it. But I think very quickly that has really added. And we've not used a lot of different colours going to come in with the black though and I'm just going to add extra shade under here look and again you'll see the difference that will really and just under here so if I lift that up can you see the difference between this and this just by adding that black so we'll do that on all of them and then watercolour pencils so I could use my water brush but as always me being me I'm going to come in with my wink of Stella and I'm just going to add some lovely sparkle and do some wink of colouring and this will just blend but also add that lovely sparkle and that black, look how it really adds the depth. And I'm coming over the white area just to blend that colour in. And if there's any harsh edges. And because I've used the same colours on the roofs, I'm not cleaning my, my Wink of Stella because I will get a little bit of colour on my brush. Just blend that up, look. Again here, blend that black out so we've got nice shade. And we've still got those light areas, look. Blend that a bit more. And obviously as it dries, the Wink of Stella will sparkle even more. Just drag that shade out there. And then on the, I want to do the rocks next because they're same colour tones. And then 
of stones here. And as you can see, it's taken me no time. Now the doors, because they're different colours, look, I've left them last. And I'm just cleaning my brush, look, because I will get a little bit of the colour on my brush. Again, the red, look. So just clean. And I've rest, I purposely left the red door last because I know that's going to give me most colour. So there we go, that lovely quick colouring. Now, obviously, we've got the black there. Lots of things you can use. You can use your black fine liner and dot it in. And I must admit, if it was me, I would dot it rather than... For me, if you colour, you, you tend to see those lines. But if I show you, you can also use black pencil. So lots of different ways. But I'm just going to dot it, look. And again, we'll add a little bit there. Now, I do think you would not be able to tell if you didn't know that that had been dotted in. So for me, it's just that thing dotting is better than, than almost colouring. Pastel pencils next. And we're just going to add some more shades. So here, look. We'll just add a little bit of shade under these rocks and the door there, look. And actually, let's add a bit of a path here. Same there, under those trees. Now again, you can smudge with your finger or I've just got a biodegradable cotton bud. And I'm just smudging. The smudging, with it being pastel, it helps fix it. But also, for me, it just makes it look better. And I tend to smudge side to side. So obviously this tree is going to have quite a... And it'll just go behind there. Lovely. So I used to do it with my finger and they did my finger there. Let's just put this path just a little bit further. And then, like I say, you would have some shade here. So what you can do, and if it had missed damp look, just bring in your pastel and just add some shade. And the same here. And what you'll find by doing that, again, it will bring this cottage to the fore. And it will bring it forward. In any areas you want it particularly darker, just go back in. Again, don't rush, spend your time on these finishing touches. And just, I mean, look at that. So it's creating such a lovely scene. And then let's get the white. And then we can just add a little bit of those white highlights. So we'll just add a little bit down this side of the tree, a little bit on this tree. This tree will be this side because obviously the moon's here. This one, add just a little. Oh, I've closed my box and put my tissue in it. <laughs> right, they're going on the floor next to Eric. At the minute, everything's going on the floor, I'm afraid. So I think that just shows how we can get foreground and make things look perspective. But also, you've got yourself a lovely scene. So if you want to learn about your perspective and how to build your scene up, this is a lovely way to start. Last little thing, I want to get my sparkly Posca. And I'm just going to add some little, and this is the yellow. I just want to add a little bit of, you could add some of your glitter. I'm just going for a few dots in our lovely ferns here. Now you could vary the time of year. You could make this a spring scene, a summer, autumn, winter. You could start on next year's Christmas cards. You could make this Christmassy, couldn't you? Now, just want to check my pen, so I'm afraid I'm a bit naughty. I turned my card over. Yep, yeah, that's fine. I'm just going to add a couple of... This is just a white gel pen and... I'm just going to go over. Now, again, you could add these any colour. They look beautiful. But I've got to be honest, in the original, I couldn't decide what colour to do my vines. And I've got such lovely colours. 
of gel pen. So in the end, I just settled on white. But again, a little bit on the door, a little bit on the doorknob, maybe the odd highlight, a couple of dots on the stones. We'll add some little highlights. And that's it. Stop, missus. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed that. And there's the original. So when you see, when you just mat and layer it onto some black card and then onto white. Beautiful, isn't it? And once we break it down into those little steps, it is totally doable, even for our newbie followers. And it's just those steps. But I think the difference is adding that black shade in there really, for me, helps bring this cottage to the front. So always remember, you stamp the front one first, work your way back. We could have masked that and stamped another one here. You could have a whole row, create yourself a whole village. Wouldn't that be fun? I hope you enjoy that. Thank you, as always, for spending time with me. If you've got any questions, just ask and I will answer to the best of my ability. I'm covering myself there, you see, <laughs> you know, because I may forget the answer sometimes. I'm getting a bit like that. Anyway, enjoy the rest of your evening and enjoy the rest of your week. You take care and I'll pop back soon. And to all of those who are out there with your pets, give them a special little pat and a hug from me. See you again soon. Bye for now.